Hello students for 1407 and 1409. This is Dr. Carver and we are arriving now and studying communities and ecosystems. Um, on another word, we are going to study the ecology and communities. You remember uh, the hierarchical level of organizations, organism give uh, population, population community, community uh, ecosystem. So community is an assemblage of population of multiple species interacting with one another within a single environment, such as our community college, for example. We are all together, multiple species. We can have a dog, we can have, they have also some prokaryotic bacteria living there. They have some trees. So and communities came in different size, therefore. And the relationship between those pieces um, and interactions, uh, it's a form over time. So we are going to see uh, one uh, type of interaction, which is the co-evolutions, which is the evolutionary a change in one species results on the other uh, evolutionary change on the other uh, species. The best example I can uh, I can talk about here is um, the hummingbird. The flower don't really provide a hummingbird with the nectar out of candles, right? They're not kind enough to provide them for food. But hummingbirds are pollinators. This means that when a hummingbird comes in contact of the flower to get the male, he brushes against the male part of the flower and gets the pollen gran grains all over itself. When he buzzes off to the next flower, the pollen wraps off onto the female part of the new flower. In this way, hummingbirds help a flower make new seeds in the next generation uh, of the flowers. Both flowers here and hummingbird benefit when the hummingbirds from each other. When the hummingbirds came by for a drink, as a result, species of hummingbirds and species of flower evolve together. This is what the process we call co-evolution or so co-adaptation. The next um, example that I can uh, uh, talk about on uh, this, uh, there was a sneaky orchids. They are why I said uh, they are very sneaky. This is a remarkable relationship, but with the orchid and the wa wasp. The orchid does not produce no nectar or edible materials. The wasp, in any case, are normally predator, predators. They are uh, hunting caterpillar and other larvae. The wasp were uh, certainly not lying any, any eggs here. But the orchid evolved to mimic the wasps. When the wasps grab the flower, it, the momentum flips him upside down and walks him into the pollen. So in another word, the orchids here mimic the female insect. So when the, the male insect come in, in the top of the orchid, he, he, he tricked him. He thinks that this is a female insect because the orchid is, mimic, is mimicking uh, the female insect. So the orchid here, as I said, he, mim he looked like a female because he started to smell and looking like a female. And the male tried to copulate with the flower 
uh, after flower and in, in the process transferring gray, uh, the, the pollens over here. The same things happen also with uh, bats and cacti uh, flowers. The bats are nocturnal, the, they are only during the night. So the flower that need to and pollinize have to be seen during the dark. So they have to be white or light colors, making them visible in the moonlight. The flower smells like a bat and are large and sturdy enable them to withstand insertions of the bat's head and it's use it as uh, uh, getting the the, 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 the the pollen that is uh, uh, in the tongue of the, the bats that got it from another flower. So all the species here in the community possess the adaptation suitable to the condition of their particular physical environment. The species not only interact with each other, but they also interact with their outside environment, with their physical environment. If the physical environment ch change, uh, that will happen in a species and their relationship with each other. Extinction can happen when the change is too brusque, too rapid for suitable patients to to So the community diversity is depend actually on the species richness, which is the number of species present in the community without looking uh, for their abundance. The species relative abundance of all the species that are present. So the, the species diversity actually consider both the number of species, which is the richness, how rich are those species within this community, the number and the relative abundance, either are they the same, equalibility or evenness. So uh, in general, in general, population of one species never live in isolation from population of the other species. The interacting populations occupying a given habitat, a given home, form an ecological community. The number of species occupying the same habitat and their relative abundance is known as the diversity of the community. Area with the low species diversity, such as the glacier, the Antarctica, still contain a wide variety of living organisms, whereas the diversity of tropical rainforests, for example, is so great that it cannot be accurately assessed. Ecologists study the, 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 study the ecology, the scientists study the ecology at the community level to understand not only the interactions between the, its species with each other, but how they compete for the same resource. So the scientists or ecologists have to come up with a plan, a model to explain why sexations happen and predict 
what will happen in the future, predict the patterns. So let me summarize this very well. So the ecological, the process by which the structure of biological community evolves over time is called ecological cessation. There are two types of section. We have the primary and the secondary. The primary sections happen essentially in lifeless area, a region in which the soil is unable of sustaining life as a result of such a factor such as uh, lava flows, uh, sand, newly formed sand dunes, rocks, um, that they are left from um, retreating glacier. Secondary situations happen in area where a community have previously exist has been removed. It's a typified by smaller scale disturbance that does not that not eliminate all life of nutrient from the environment. So uh, this is where I came up the word climax. I'm coming to this. Primary and secondary secession, the primary, I, 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 um, I recapitulate, is uh, primary essentially is lifeless, happened essentially in li lifeless area, a region in which the soil is unable to have life as on it, right? Secondary is uh, happen in area where a community previously exists but has been removed all right so both of those primary and secondary successions create a continue continually changing mix of species within communities such as disturbance of different intensities size frequencies after the landscape Some environment situation reached reach what we call climax. Climax, which produce actually a stable community dominated by a small number of prominent species. This is kind of state of equilibrium. We call that climax community. It's thought to result when the uh, when biotic interactions become so interact that no other species can be admitted. First species, for example, in an area undergoing primary or secondary are called opportunistic pioneer species. They are small in stature, short-lived, quick to mature, produce numerous offspring by reproductive elements. They are photosynthetic organism, um, so they produce their own food. 
The equilibrium species came later with large incised, long life, slow to mature and produce a few offspring phagoproductive events. So let's let's just recapitulate over here. Let's stop for a moment. So we said a primary session in which biological community developed where no life had existed previously. Secondary take a place where a disturbance did not eliminate all life and nutriment from the environment. Although they are like fire, flooding, and other dispersions may bring visible ruin to the landscapes, we can see some back up the biological community to an early stage. The habitat is not lifeless because the soil that has been under the fire, for example, Routine nutri nutrients and seed that were set down before the disturbance happen. So the buried seeds can sprout shortly after the effect of this disturbance pass. And some may have greater success from reduced competition and reduced shading. Some species may be adapted to the frequent passage of a particular disturbance, for example, the, the penis pankyasana, uh, which is the jack pine, is a tree species common in Northeast US and Canada, require heat from a wildfire to open its cones before seeds can be spread for new growth. Sometimes, however, catastrophic disturbance, such as a massive volcanic eruptions or glacier, advancing glacier, effectively eliminate all biological activities in the area. In, sad, in such cases, any seed that survive this, those kind of disturbance are covered with a large amount of ash, rock, ice, which completely isolate them from the area for future development. And in, in this case, those area can return to life only through the process of a primary succession. Succession. So the successions, really the stages, um, are completely similar to the primary successions um, when it came to these pioneer species, those pieces that arrive in the cleared area slowly give away to a community of an intermediate species over, over time, over years, uh, before a climax community can become established. For, uh, the best example, insects and the weedy plant, the weeds, um, they are uh, often the first to recolonize the disturbed area. And those species are in turn replaced by harder uh, plants and animals. If the area remain undisturbed, the biological community, uh, communities, ecological species, and species compos composition can be stabilized.
we talk about pioneer species. We do have, this is what I was looking for, the word indicator species. They are, most of them are microorganisms or plants that serve as a measure um, that exists in a given local. For example, the grease wood indicates saline soil, mosses indicate acid soils, etc. The indicates um, those type, uh, um, we call them, the indicate the conditions. Uh, they are indicators, so the indicates actually uh, the type of the of, of, uh, environmental condition that exists in a given local uh, uh, that we are studying. So the, the, their presence um, suggests uh, for the ecologists how well other species may grow in the same conditions uh, at this uh, same place using those indicator species. As I said in the beginning, that uh, in general, the population of one species never live in isolations from population of other species. They interact with each other in a given location, in a given habitat from uh, an ecological community. So they can uh, uh, live as competitor competitions to species for limited source has a negative effect on the abundance of the both species because they compete in a negative way. They can live as a predator feeding, uh, one live as a predator, the other one is a prey for this predator. Uh, parasitism, uh, the, the, the obtain nutriment from host but does not kill the host. Commensalism, one species benefit while the other is not armed, or mutualism, the two species interact so that they both benefit. So this table over here really show the competition is negative, negative. The both species can decrease. Um, uh, predations, one is a predator is going to increase if the predator increase, the prey will decrease because he leave dependent on the prey on eating the prey. Parasitism, abundance of the parasites increase and the abundance of the host decrease. Commensalism, uh, it doesn't affect the other species at all. The mutualism, both of them increase together. There are a mutual relationship between the two species. We we'll arrive at the next slide, which is the ecological niche, and I am going to explain that, then I will stop at this slide, and I will continue the next. This uh, chapter is very long, so I'm going to divide it in three parties. So uh, ecological niche. Um, niche is actually a French word. Um, It means living in one locality, it's locality. So it's the nest. This is what's mean. 
mean to nest. It's a French word. An ecological describe how species interact with and lives in its habitat. So now I'm not going to look at how species interact with each other, but how the species interact with their own nest, their own habitat. So in ecology, the ne or niche is the match of a species to uh, its specific environmental conditions. So in this case, we are the, the, this study, the ecological niche describe the species how they interact now within the ecosystem, within their physical environment that this depend on beauty living or non-living factors beautiful or abiotic factors the ability of the species to survive and endure biotic factor affecting a niche include food availability and predators The dragonfly insect habitat is a pond or a lake where he eats other insects from the, that they exist in the pond or the lake. Actually, they exist where they exist in vegetations where a dragonfly can hunt for a prey in those pond and the lake. So the pond or lake must contain clean water so the dragonfly can see through and ample vegetations because the insects um, are um, vegetations where the larvae of dragonfly where uh, which are aquatic can seek shelter from predator and develop into an adult dragonfly Since it is difficult to describe a measure of total niche of a species, because each species has her own niche, her own way, where a habitat, uh, a physical environment, flamingo feed on small molecules, crustacea, and vegetables, matter stained from mood pumped through their bells by their powerful tongue. The doubling duck fed by uh, tipping tail up to rich aquatic plant seeds, snails, and insects. The avocets feeds on insects, small marine and vertebrae, and seeds by sweeping their bills from side to side in the shallow water. The oyster catcher prey open the bee valve shells with their knife-like bills and probe sand for uh, worms and crabs. The plover dart around on the beach and uh, grassland hunting for insects and small invertebrates. So it's, I mean, it, uh, this, it, this is, uh, each species have a certain uh, aspect of their niche. So next uh, lecture, we will talk about the interactions uh, between species regarding their physical environment as a competition, looking for uh, a source for their food. They compete. We are going to talk about um, the parasitism and we are going to talk about the commercialism and symbiosis. So this will be on the next uh, uh, lectures. I will stop over here and we will continue uh, next week.